Welcome to the White's Perry Select Roundtable. All of us have worn the Perry Selects that White sent us over the last, it's supposed to be 30 days, but how long has it been? Because when did we do that video? Like four oh, months ago? Like, yeah, four months. Was it from October? Yes. So it was like October. So all of us have had these boots for quite a while. So I think the first thing that I want to do is just kind of lay down the, the ground here of who's got what and what they, they got and the sizing just to give you the base information so then we can go off of that. So for me, I don't know, I still have them on. So I have the six inch Perry Selects in the British Tan Double Shot. And to give you kind of a sizing guide, I am a 10 on the Brannock and I got a nine and a half. And the nine and a half, it fits, but it's a little bit snug. And honestly, I think I, I could have gone with a, with a 10 and been just, just happy with it. If I, you know, and the, the thing with these is they come with an insole, which I really like. And if, if I really was stuck with these and they're a little bit squishing the toe, I would have, you can just remove this and it makes them immediately like a little bit bigger, like a quarter size to half a size. So that's what I went with. It's 10 on the Brannock, nine and a half, but I probably, I probably would have preferred a 10 in the whites. So that's my boot information. Who wants to go next in the Boot Anonymous meeting we've got going on here? Boots Anonymous. Bootaholics Anonymous. <laughs> Should we go counterclockwise? Oh, yeah. Oh. Daniel Skeen. Daniel Skeen. Okay, okay. Okay, what'd you get, Daniel? I got the, uh, well, my Brannock. Wait, do I start with six, <laughs> six inch Perry oh. Select. Oh, yeah. Six inch Perry Select. What color is it? Burgundy. Oh, that is a really pretty color, actually. Burgundy double shot. Yeah, double shot. Oh. So this is tan by sidle, so it's like you've got that, like, really crazy pull up. And, uh, let's see, what else? You, what, so what's your Brannock size? I'm an 11 on the Brannock. And you got a what? I got a 10. Really? So yeah. what, how did that how did that feel? Uh, I felt awesome, actually. It was like perfect. So you went a whole s size down and it fit you and I went half a size down and I could have gone true to size. Yeah. Do you like your boots a little bit tighter and like shoes generally? Uh, yeah, I do a little bit. Okay. But I mean, I'm, my, I'm not touching the front of the, the boot. Because for me, I like to have like, I like to have like a thumb width at the top. I just hate having my toes squished. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, I didn't burp on camera. <laughs> okay, who's next? Uh, I'll go. Okay, Jay. I... Right here. It's the show camera. Yep. I wore it. Wait, what is it? It's an 8-inch. Eight, <laughs> it's the 8-inch. 8-inch eight eight Perry Select. Yep. In what color? Burgundy. It's crazy how much different your guys' are. Throw me your boot again. The difference in, like... Somebody who well was his a double shot? Is that what you said? Yeah, both of them are the burgundy double shot. And oh, you can see the difference between someone know. who really <laughs> wore these boots versus Daniel. Yeah. Hey, I wore them. <laughs> I wore them through April, all the way through. Fair April. enough. I I uh, wore them until like June. Okay. And uh, I mean, I do work in the dirt. He has a real job. <laughs> so. I went to He's got a real job. job. <laughs> So, okay, then you had, what's your Brannock size? Uh, 10 and a half. Okay. These are a 10. Uh, I also like my boots snug. I could have worn a nine and a half. I think I would have been happiest at a 10. So you went half a size down, but you like yours a little bit snugger. Or wait, yeah. <laughs> I was a 10 and a half, these are a 10. Yeah, so yeah. half a size. Yeah, down. yeah, I could easily go to a nine and a half. Because we're boot brothers. Yeah, we are. We share the exact same of boots, foot size of boots. But you like your boots snug. I like mine loose. So even though my feet are dainty compared to your big old, I would feet. say they fit perfectly from like what's this part of the boot called? Vamp. Yep. From here back, it was perfect. I had a little bit more room than I typically like in the toe box. Oh, really? Yeah, but. But you like having your toes like a little bit of pressure. I like having my boots snug. Okay. Like if I could have my boots fit like my socks. You're crazy. I mean, not want that. <laughs> I hate having my toes squished. Okay. But I, I love these boots. So. Okay. Tabes. See. see what you got. Okay. See if someone can actually follow, follow the, for, the format of this video. Yeah. Let's see what you got. Just bouncing around. So we got six inch Perry Select in black, sidle double shot. So it's cool because it has a T-core to it. Right. So it has the brown 
What does T-core mean? So there's a lot of leather that's the, it's black all the way through the cross section of the leather versus T-core is just kind of this, as far as I understand, a made up term yes. that people use when it's, when it's just dyed black on the surface. Aren't and all the, terms made up? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't all language made up? Quit distracting us with the video. I'm sorry, I just... This guy, we keep bringing him in for one video. <laughs> He's just questioning everything that we hold true here at Roseanville. So T core <laughs> is it's like Raider it, British. Yeah, it's like it's like it's hardcore. But if you're like from Brit from Brit Britain, yeah, T core from British, from, yeah. from, from British, British. <laughs> from Britain, from Britain. Um, but but T core is when it's just the top surface, and people really like it because as you wear them, the black wears off, and you start to see some of the pops of color of the the core color, which a lot is a lot brighter, and that's why it's called T core. That's cool. It is cool. So sizing wise, how did it fit? So I'm a 13 on Branock, and then these are, they say they're 12 and a half, but they feel a little bit bigger, so. Cause you have a pair of regular Perry's too, right? Yeah, the first original Perry's, and I originally got them in 13, and they were a little bit big, so then I got 12 and a half, and those fit good. So I got these in 12 and a half, I think, cause because of the old ones, and these feel like my 13's did. So they feel oh, a little really? bigger, so. I'm not sure what's going on there. If they just slapped on a 12 and a half label or... Well, because it's, it's built slightly different, right? Because you have the, the leather shank, you have a thicker leather insole, you have the leather counter. A little bit more, there's a little bit more uh, arch support. Because I have heard that if you have more arch support, it, it shrinks your foot slightly. So you think that's what, it, what the cause of it? Yeah, that could be. So I could probably go with a 12. I'd be interested to try with a 12. I yeah. Guess, so. so you went half a size down and you're okay with it, so a little bit roomy. So you, you maybe preferred going a full size down. So we're all over the place with sizing. <laughs> okay. Um, next. You look everyone. All right. <laughs> yeah, a very informative video. We're just like, what's T-Core? The sizing's all over the place. <laughs> well, no, I think it's like probably pretty true to size, but it depends on like, it's all preference yeah. based. What your preference is, because I prefer <laughs> tight. Right. You prefer. Lucy. Loose. Right. Because oh. do you prefer yours a little bit tighter too? prefer just a well-fitting boot. <laughs> Fair enough. What is a well-fitting boot to Yeah, you? come on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, Taylor's avoiding talking as much as possible. <laughs> snug around the, like the ball of the foot and like same like a thumb's width, maybe a little bit less than a thumb. So you probably fit average. Jay likes it tight. I like it a little bit loose. So you're probably spot on on average. And so it seems like before, I guess, before we get to... Actually, let's go through yours first, then we'll draw some conclusions. All right. So, what do you got here? I got the White's Perry Select 6-inch. Uh, yeah, the, the toe moving uh, <laughs> just on the screen. Very good. Very good. <laughs> All right. Because this is the... What uh, leather is this? It's tobacco stampede leather, which I guess is different from everybody else's is double yeah. shot. Um, we're saying it's a little bit softer. It is. Than the double shots. It felt really nice. Uh, Wait, um, the, the B-roll shot? Yeah. So can you tell how soft it is? Did you try any of the other boots on? Did you actually feel a difference from boot to boot? Or are you just going off of like what people said? I'm I'm just going off what Taylor mostly said. Uh, because it is a different tannage, because this is the it's not double shot, it's it's the stampede. And this is this is that that leather that we talked about in the main video that was um, uh, whites, I think, flew out to Seidel and they were like, I want that couch leather right there. What is yeah. that thing? And they're like, oh, that's just tobacco stampede. And so they ended up making this boot out of that couch leather, which is one of their most popular and famous leathers is the tobacco stampede because of like, see how much lighter it's gotten in the toe here from some wear versus like in some of the spots you don't get as much wear, it stays dark. So it's really similar to the Red Wing Oro Legacy leather or even throw your foot up here, Taylor. Your uh, Thorough Goods have that, which is also tanned by Seidel, but it's a lot more tumbled and a lot softer leather. So. Out of all the leathers, this one's my favorite. I think it's a beautiful yeah, leather. It's awesome. It's it looks good and it felt good. I don't know what double shot means. <laughs> Jay, Jay's just Jay's just <laughs> it's here. It's all made up. Jay's here to <laughs> just ask all the questions just, that people that aren't working with boots all day every day have questions about. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if I was watching the video, I'd be like, "What's double shot?" Well, that's that actually a good question because the main difference between the two leathers, to me, is. This leather, which is the double shot, is a lot more, it's packed with a lot more tanning compounds and conditioners and oils. So it's a lot uh, more of a moist leather and it should break in faster. 
but with this with the tobacco stampede it doesn't have quite as much in it but I, I don't know if they tumble it or what they do but it just it doesn't have that same really high shine coat on top it doesn't have nearly as much of the conditioner worked into it and so it should be stiffer but for some reason it's a very malleable so leather. then would be harder to break in you'd think that but it's not it's but like that's why you have it's... a hard time well, we'll get to it, Jay. Okay, okay, I'm asking. From what I remember from Whites, they called it like a really good work leather, and the other double shots right. were like a nice dressy and, I mean, the other you can work and dress in both of them. Well, yeah, and I guess that's a good point, because if you just look at the difference of the heels of these, of my pair, that I've got the heel really beat up, and I don't think that Sam beat his heel up any less or more, it's just the difference in leather. The tobacco stampede hides the scar, or the scratches and the beating up your boots more than this, this more showy high gloss and highly finished leather so what about sizing how'd your sizing go uh i'm a 9.5 on the brownock and these are a 9.5 d i guess if that matters uh i think they're, they're, they're i like my boots pretty tight um these were fairly snug i probably could have gone to a 10 but they felt pretty good to me uh being pretty snug i think if they were any bigger like a 10 it might have felt like too much room for me but once again i'm on the snug side so you're you went true to size off your brown oak yeah so nine and a half on the brown oak nine and a half size yeah so right now we're all over the place yeah we've got <laughs> the guys that like it a little bit tight are half a size down mm -hmm. i like true to size because i like a little wiggle room and and yours is all over the place because you're i guess it could also be how your foot is like you have a higher arch right. as opposed to like i have flat feet so it's like i need arch support so, so I would say like generally then like half a size down if you like your boots si like a little bit more snug, you like a little bit more support and true to size if you want just a little bit more wiggle room. I was a full size down. Daniel's an anomaly. Who I, knows what's going I on think there. I think I could go full size down and I would still be happy with it. And you like your boots tight? Yeah, mine are like right on too. So like if you them. really like them tight. Yeah. So and I like mine really tight. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to be clear. Like, I want mine to fit okay. like ski boots. <laughs> so, so if we go true to size is a roomy fit, half a size down is like a, an averagely snug fit, mm -hmm. and then a full size down is a really snug fit that's like, it's like really toes, locks your feet yeah. in. Yeah. Like, if you're working and you're, you're going to be side healing or you're going to be sit, sit, like standing on uneven ground, you don't want your foot sliding around in the boot, you could go a full size down. Mm -hmm. But I think you two are an anomaly. I think the majority of people would be fine with half a size down or true to size. Or true to size. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like my boots tight. We figured it out. <laughs> so now that we've <laughs> figured that out, kind of, now let's go to the, the next questions. And let's just generally talk about like uh, initial impressions, first wear, the first little bit of breaking in, what did you guys think? And like your initial, like maybe two or first two or three days of wearing these, how did it feel? Because for me, I was I, I love these Perrys because they're so much easier to break in than the vast majority of Pacific Northwest boots because they come with that insole. And so instead of like trying to get that footprint in there, you have at least that foam that breaks it in slowly. I know with like, with like Red Wings, when I first had my Iron Rangers, you literally feel like you're standing on just bricks, just super hard. So yeah, definitely, at least the bottom of your feet it definitely helps with that part. What did you guys think? Is there anything you guys noticed when it comes to like the first wear, first few wears? I didn't have an insole, so. So you didn't, you started without an insole. <laughs> yeah. So did you feel it was like really hard underfoot initially? It's like the hardest thing I've ever worn. Right. But, you know, I've, I've, I hadn't worn like a, a boot with no insole before. Okay. Sam, what did you think of your initial few wears? Um, I thought it was really comfortable. Uh, I mean, compared to the Drifter, uh, which was done by Whites, that one was like hard, but with the soft insoles, like made it super comfortable like right off the bat. That's, and that's what I like about these boots is you get you still get that footprint inside of the boot, but you have the ease of breaking it in with that insole inside. Because I, I bet if you looked at the inside of this boot, you would see that I have a footprint in there just from wearing it. So, <clears throat> what, what did you talk me? about you? No. <laughs> okay, what did you think of your first few days? Well, I loved it. I put them on and they were perfect like day one. I also think that it was because I was forced to do a half size bigger than I normally would right. choose. So it was a lot easier for me. I also had my insole in. Uh, but so yeah, it was it was like <clears throat> mellow. They instantly became my favorite boot. Okay. Because that's the thing that I, like I said, I really like about these is they give you the insole. And the, the, the nice thing about this last is it's a very generous last. So you have plenty of room to have an insole, but if you do want to take it out or you need some extra room, you still have that really thick 
leather underneath your foot. Okay, what about, um, what did you guys actually use them for? Like, how did you guys use these over the course of the last few months? Jay, why don't you start first? Oh, you, okay. So, <laughs> sorry, since you keep since forgetting since me. Since neglect you. Uh, you don't even work here. I know. I work out in the field. He's our, he's our, he's our wear tester. <laughs> Jay's our, our wear tester and my, my leg model because throw your leg up there. Show the people the difference between our legs. Hike, hike that up there. I got freaking... So when we need to look, when we need a boot to look real manly, we throw them on Jay. I don't think anything's pointing at our legs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You gotta move this. Move it. Yeah. yeah, whatever. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> my legs are way better than his. It's true. Um... What did you I, use them for? I hiked in them. I paraglided in them. I worked in them. I mean, I wore them for everything. Like, I instantly was like, this is the best boot. Are you just I, saying that because... No, I'm not joking. I stopped wearing my ND2s. All right. <laughs> Personal dig, but it's fine. I loved my <laughs> ND1s. But there is a difference because that foam wedge sole and the insole, it does yeah. make it yeah, yeah. a lot com more comfortable. Yeah. Uh, so my, what, what, out of all those things, which one did you use them the most for? Um, hey, that's not even his I mean, I use them the most for working. Because what, what do you do for work? Um, excavation. So that's why your boots are so actually beat up and worn like a person would actually buy these? Yes. Um, <clears throat> and... Because you've yeah, mentioned I, to me I, that you like the wedge sole rather than like a lug sole because when you're doing ex excavation yeah, work, it that, gets all muddy. Right. Yeah. With these, you can just literally scrape them off on your porch. Yep. Super easy to get clean. Did you notice a difference of comfort underfoot doing excavation work in a in these compared to like the ND3 or the ND1s or whatever? Um, no, they they felt as comfortable underfoot, but just I I think it was ease of cleaning the uh, wedge sole off and also the uppers like. The leather just felt so good. Okay. Like day one. Yeah, that's like because you got the double shot, so it's like that really conditioner packed leather that is really supple and soft right off the back. Because if, if you feel this now, it is like really soft. It's crazy. Yeah. I mean, they're they're like I have quite a few pairs of shoes, and they're my most comfortable shoes. Well, and your like not shoes, not even just boots. They're my most comfortable shoes. Because they're not even really worn out that much either. <laughs> Okay. Well, I stopped wearing them because I felt like I was, like, giving a head up everyone. You definitely <laughs> have. <laughs> okay, who's next? Sam? I can go. I guess we'll go clockwise. Uh, what are the questions again? What did you use them for over the course of the last three or four months? Oh, let's see. I used them for everything. Uh, I like to go on really long walks. So yeah, because you go on morning walks, right? Yeah, I try and go on, like, a three-mile walk at least That's every day. Crazy. And I would just use them in my garden and stuff. And I was up on my roof a bunch while doing this, uh, which for was awesome. What? Just hanging out. Oh there. yeah, clearing the squirrels like... out of my walls and <laughs> getting all this stuff out of my house. Uh, but the initial impression, <laughs> I mean, was... the first thing I did with them is I went on like a four mile walk to Trader Joe's, as one does, just on the concrete. Um, and it kind of tore my heel up a little bit, like in the back. So, so the very first time you wore them, you wore yeah, it on a four mile walk? The very walk. first time I wore them, I probably, you know, went the super hard way. Yeah, I mean, and a mistake. Yeah. But hey, you got to, you know. <laughs> well, part of that's probably caused by the, the, the thicker leather counter they put in the selects. Because it's instead of that compressed cardboard counter that was in the regular ones, this is a lot harder, and it takes a little bit longer to break in because it's a really stiff veg tan. Yeah, it's super thick in the back. Um, but honestly, that was, like, the only thing. It was super comfortable with the wedge sole, and... I was like, with wearing other boots, like the Drifter, uh, I guess, with that super arch support, it was like, oh, these take a while to break in. These are just like instantly hmm. good to go. Cool. Uh, other than the back of my heel a little bit rubbing, getting a little blister, but uh, okay. I don't know. I loved them. So. Okay, Daniel Skeen. Did you even wear yours, Daniel? No, <laughs> normally I like things super thick in the back, but... Uh, <laughs> these, these were on the, on the back just of my Just sit on that joke for five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, yeah, I wore the, I moved, and I wore them for my whole move, so I was carrying a lot of heavy stuff. That was probably the most rigorous thing that I did with these boots on. Uh, and just kind of around the shop, walking yeah, around generally? Around the shop. How much did you move? Like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, by move, do you mean like? I was like up and down, <laughs> to the side a little. Okay. Yeah. All right, Tay, what about you? 
What did you use yours for over the last few months? Yeah, so I've, uh, I have quite a few boots, boots, so they didn't get as much as much love as they should have. But for the first month, we all did the one month challenge, so wore them for a month straight and just casual slash uh, like in the yard, mowing the lawn, kicking rocks, stuff like that. <laughs> just out in the yard, just kicking stuff, <laughs> kicking your kids, um, kicking you know, stray cats. Yep, uh, and then uh, yeah, same problem as Sam though. He'll, I guess, I have like a really dainty heel, so same. my heels are always slipping. Well, lads, here, for you. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. So any boot that the only issues I have with breaking in is my heel with any any boots that have that issue. So I got some blisters in the back of my heel. Okay. Um, but uh, it's common. So nothing against these boots in particular. So. Okay, and then for me, where did mine go? I I wore mine on a couple hikes. I wore mine around the shop. You know, I did a little bit of like uh, I went down to Mona and did did some farm work in them. You know, I tried to like try a, a few different things in them. And um, I did I had same as you. I didn't really wear them as much as maybe as I should have because they have so many boots I have to wear. But they got enough wear that I got a good impression of them. So now the real question is, what do you guys dislike about these boots? Because you know, just because Whites gave us these boots, they gave us ten pairs of boots, over four thousand dollars worth of boots gave to us. But that doesn't mean that we can't talk a little bit of trash on a boot from time to time and tell people the honest truth about what we like but more importantly, what we disliked about the breaking in process. And one common thing seems to be that the heel is a tough break in because I went on a 4th of July, excuse me? Sorry, I didn't, I didn't mute it. I went on a 4th of July hike in these and I ripped my heel up too. So it seems like a really common thing is you have to make sure that heel is broken in before you go on any length of hike at all. <laughs> is that you? <laughs> my bad. So, um, uh, so that's a common one. What other things do you guys dislike about this boot? I don't say maybe I was my only dislike. The hill? It. Yeah, it was like I just sat there and flexed my counter for a while, which is I'm probably not supposed to do. No, it would help, as long as you don't like bend it so much that it creases and breaks. Just and that's why, that, that's why the leather is better than like a compressed cardboard, because you could break compressed cardboard <clears throat> versus leather. It's going to be tough to break. Another thing I noticed was like, just generally, these wedge soles are not hiking soles. I was slipping all over the place oh, when yeah. I was trying to hike in these. Super slippery. I th I'd say slippery is like the only thing I didn't like about it mm -hmm. for hiking. Right. Well, and I, that's the thing is like nobody, you shouldn't hike in a wedge sole. They're not made for hiking. They're, ma they're more for like standing on concrete all day, doing like construction work where you, you need that extra squish and comfort. Standing mm -hmm. on your roof. Standing on your roof all day, kicking rocks. Yeah, mowing the lawn. Doing manly <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Middle-aged yeah. manly stuff? Yeah. Pushing the boulder up the uh, I had yeah. zero issues with my heel. Okay. Anybody else have any issues or complaints about them, generally? You want to see the photo? Of what? Your heel? <laughs> I do. Yeah, we'll Insert put it in a B-roll. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we might get demonetized for it. I know, right? This, uh, I don't know if it's just the black leather, but the black leather was pretty stiff. Was it? I had, to, had to oil up, like get some mink oil around the... Ankle and stuff. Oh, gross. Just give you that. I want to see. Just put that right there. <laughs> you really wore your heel. Oh, up. My, my boots were very squeaky. <laughs> oh, really? Squeaky? Oh, yeah. What part was. Do you know which part was squeaky? Do you remember me being like, give me some oil, dog? Because yeah, then uh, it was the insole we figured out. I think it was the insole that was squeaking my aftermarket insole. Oh, so it wasn't even the boot, it was your insole. No, but it pissed me off. Cause that, that's when <laughs> I wasn't. That's your fault. I wasn't sneaking that's, anywhere. <laughs> just squeaking around the hole, everywhere you go. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. it's done now. <clears throat> because that was that was a complaint that people had. I think even your pair of Perry's, when they used to have the integrated shank in the inside of the outsole, or the steel shank, it clicked and sometimes it popped and made some squeaking noises and stuff. Yeah, my original Perry's still have a slight click in the right, but not enough that. It's an issue, and then these with the it says a leather shank, right? Yeah. Yeah. So this doesn't have any clicking or noises. Okay. So and then we solved yours with we oiled your insole. I think. Yeah, we oiled the oiled insole and the inside leather. of the boot. Yeah. Okay. And now it's gone. Any other complaints? Any other issues that you guys have had? It looks like they held up pretty well, especially yours in construction work. Um. Yeah, no one else has any complaints. They're going to think that we just like phone this thing in if nobody <laughs> complains. I, I don't. These are my favorite boots. Fair enough. Okay, now, now how do they feel now? What do you guys think of them now that they're broken in, now that you've been wearing them? 
how do they feel to you guys? For me, I we let the cat in. Otherwise, he's gonna sit there and meow the whole time. But for me, my uh, the thing that I actually used mine the most for that I I really really liked was just standing all day. So I I like whether it was like a standing day in the back of the shop or like working on the weekend. But, but more specifically, I wore these on. Like I, I wore them to concerts a bunch. Like I knew for sure that I'd have the support, that they'd be comfortable underfoot, and that if someone stomped on my toe, I'd have at least some protection, you know, because it's a structured toe. And uh, these are always a safe bet, no matter what. I could I could rely on them for standing for several hours without being uncomfortable. That's I think where what I would use them the most for. I feel like if you're going to be on your feet a lot, they're a good boot. Because I, I even wore like the Indy ones to. A concert and it's that hard leather under, underneath your foot and the hard rubber, you feel it. Your foot like almost falls asleep. But this is soft enough that you get a little bit of squish, a little support, and you, you have that circula circulation still. Yeah. And compared to the original Perry's, like you can definitely feel the arch support. Like when we first got these, I took off my, I was wearing my original Perry's that day, took them off and put these on. You can instantly feel the arch support from that extra leather shank. So you like the arch support? Cool. So, what about you guys? Now that you've worn them in, what do you like about them? Like, what's your what's your take on them? What do you dislike? All that, or even like what? Would you, <laughs> Go ahead. Or even like what you, what you'd use them for now? Or like what you use them for? Like I really liked mine because I was just like putting around my garden and going on walks. Like I don't think I'd take them on you know four or five mile walks uh, if I had to, but they're like super awesome for just a. Uh, like doing yard work and standing on my roof all day. Uh, <laughs> Sam's just up on his I'm roof. I'm just on my roof all day. Like, I own this place. <laughs> this is my house. This is my stand house down now. And I look down upon people. I know I'm not going to slip because they're like, <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, I think they're just like sick for work and just like honestly all purpose shoe, except for maybe slippery hmm. in the winter and a little bit on the heels. But Yeah, I'm, in the winter, yeah. that wedge still can get pretty slick. I just kind of inherent to the roof. So. <clears throat> yeah. I would say if it's wet, or, yeah, like slippery surfaces. You don't want to get too wet. <laughs> you guys quit shoehorning <laughs> <quit shoring, laughs> these stupid <laughs> jokes in this video. Sorry. Okay, final Shh. question then. I love it. I love the boot. <laughs> I don't have any complaints. Just not, I don't like it when it's wet. Okay, final question. These are like $400 boots. If Because we got these for free. So if you had to go out and, and buy a new pair of boots, would you spend the $400 on these or would you get a cheaper alternative? What's your opinion on like what you'd buy these for, how you'd spend the money? Just like, are they worth the 400 bucks? Now that I've worn them, 100%. I would have a hard time buying them. They're pretty pricey, honest. right? Yeah. That's, and I think that's part of where the, the regular Perry's come into play because they're like 50 bucks cheaper and you get a lot of the same benefits but without like the really fine details of like the leather counter, the leather shank, and uh, what's the what's the other thing that's different in them? The thicker leather insole. So when it comes to work, that's why in that, that video I was kind of like, you know, you don't have to buy these. The regular Perry's work really well for if you're just needing a work boot. The difference between the Select and the regular Perry's, I don't know if it's enough to justify for a work boot unless you really need the arch support like Taylor was saying. I'd, I'd get them for the, the tobacco stampede just yeah. for that leather because it's all it's all upgraded leather so yeah because i like the classic like red wing color right like coloration of it and the softer so yeah I'd probably if, if i was to buy them I'd, instead of going with black i would go with with that one so that's kind of that's what it is somewhat to me is like this hybrid boot where if you really just want like a mock toe that's fairly comfortable and you're going to wear it out and throw it away, you can go with some thorough goods, you can go with some cheaper alternatives. But this boot is more of like a boot guy's hardworking boot where you have all, everything's upgraded, it's the best materials, and it's going to work for you. Like if you're actually doing construction work, um, if you're working on your roof for some reason, you know, it's like... All the time. You can, it, it's as sturdy, it's actually, I would argue that it's sturdier and heavier duty than any, even like thorough goods. But, you know, it's, it's almost... Is it, what is 150 bucks more expensive than throw goods? So if you're just thrashing them, it's like you almost would rather go with either the regular Perry's or thorough goods. But if you're going to use it as kind of a hybrid boot of like, oh, I want this boot to look good and I want it to last a really long time and I want to resole it rather than just throwing them away at the end of the season, that's where I, I kind of see the value of these boots. Yeah, I think with the the insole too, like the insert, it's like kind of the good in between of like Red Wing just has the 
the leather insole, which you can still put an insert into, but and then like Thorough Goods is the has the insert and all the foam underneath. So it's like the premium of the mock toe, I think. Like, right, that's a good point. So Best of all, both worlds. Yeah, like all the mock toes. If you want like the Red Wing look, but all the better materials and everything like that, like I would go with that one. So. I think that's fair. All I'm saying is I have a pair of Red Wings and they were my favorite boots. I haven't even put them on since I got hmm. these. Because are they the, are they Irish setters, like the actual work boots too? Mm -hmm. So that's what's interesting to me is like, you can use it as a work boot and it'll last a long time and you can get it resold and like this leather's so tough that it's gonna last a long time. And the mock toe stitch allows you to like re-stitch that if it ever starts to split. You can, you can stitch it by hand even. And uh, you get the actual longevity of, of all those upgraded materials. Or you can wear them as a casual boot. You know, because like that's, I think a lot of people, is that's what they're gonna wear these for is like mostly casual boots, but also you can do whatever you want them I and you know they're sturdy enough to like withstand whatever. Do you wanna give these boots to your kids? <laughs> Are these an heirloom boot? <laughs> you know? Jay just goes super hard into selling the boot right at the very end. I don't know if yours will last for your kids, but... Yeah, I'm yours are thrashed. They definitely but actually, they're really them. not. Because if you really look at these, you can wear them quite perfect. a bit. And, like, the, the mock toe stitch is still in good condition. You Wait till I the leather, them, dude. Yeah, but they, and that's the thing, is they're not even... Like, they're, they're just dusty. So... You made them dusty on purpose just for this video. Yeah, you faked it. No, I pulled them out of my clothes. I haven't worn them for, like, a month because I felt like... You guys aren't even wearing it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm up on my roof. <laughs> yeah, he's roofing it. Any last thoughts from anybody? Anything, any dumb jokes you guys want to shoehorn in this video you've been sitting on for five minutes? Let's see. Yeah. I like things to... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think that my <laughs> heel didn't late. hurt because mine oh, yeah. are eight inch boots. Like I think oh, that yeah. is a good point. Yeah, because and I'm that... typically eight inches when everyone's <laughs> <Yeah. stuff>. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, thanks for Whites for sponsoring this video. I don't even know they sponsored it. They gave us the free boots. We want to do this to them for them to thank them for doing it. So thank you guys for watching, and thanks to everyone that came to to be, have a very informative video. <laughs> so thank you guys. See ya. And the most worn-in boot is this over here. <laughs>